my, my one granddaughter had a Veterans Day celebration at her school and had invited me out. And then after that was over, she had told me there's, you know, she had put something together and was it was going to come in the mail. And it was just a picture that she had colored. And on the back of it was a note, you know, Papa, thank you for your service. And you re I really want you to quit smoking. Oh. <laughs> I don't want anything to happen to you and dad wants you to quit too. So that kind of was the trigger that pushed me over the edge to really want to take this seriously and go ahead and move forward with it. Hi everyone, this is Nasia Davos and welcome to this episode of Ask an X. Every Ask an X episode features an inspiring ex-smoker who succeeded with the CBQ method and who shares their personal experience and unique perspective on quitting smoking. And the ex I have with me today joined our CBQ program and quit smoking a pack and a half a day after more than 50 years, and he's here to tell you how he did it. Please welcome Mike Miller. Hi, Mike. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Nasia. Thank you for asking. Of course. It's a pleasure to be here. Great. So you have been a non-smoker for more than a year now, since the 28th of January 2020. Correct. A huge congratulations. What a great achievement and milestone. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. It was um, it was something I wanted to do and was able to accomplish it. And thanks to your help and the CBQ program. Well, I'm I'm glad the program helped you, but you're the one who did it. So you smoked for more than 50 years. How did you start smoking? Uh, I was probably about 12 and uh, just snagged a couple of cigarettes out of my mom's pack because it was a cool thing to do at that point in time. And that was, uh, that was the beginning of it. So it was, um, uh, like I said, that was around 12, and then it grew from there. By the time I was 16, uh, was probably smoking a half a pack to a pack a day. Wow, yeah. So what made you decide to stop smoking after all these years? Uh, probably my, grand, my grandchildren uh, continuously telling me, uh, you know, Papa, you've got to quit smoking. And last November not this past November, the November before, uh, the my, my one granddaughter had a Veterans Day celebration at her school and had invited me out. And then after that was over, she had told me there's, you know, she had put something together and was it was going to come in the mail. And it was just a picture that she had colored. And on the back of it was a note you know, Papa, thank you for your service. And you re we, I really want you to quit smoking. Oh. <laughs> I don't want anything to happen to you. And dad wants you to quit too. So that kind of was the trigger that pushed me over the edge to really want to take this seriously and go ahead and move forward with it. Wow, that is very powerful. Yeah. Wow. I can, uh, so, 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 so powerful. So after you got that letter, did you try to quit many times before you succeeded or you succeeded right away? What happened? Well, I had uh, I'd seen your videos. I had watched those and then signed up for the program. Uh, I had started, uh, I had a false start uh, mm -hmm. back in December and just before uh, the Christmas holiday. And it was... Um, not the time to do it. It was just too many things going on. We had a friend coming in from out of town. Uh, my wife smokes, uh, she smokes. And it was a challenge for me at that point in time. So I put it on, put it on hold. I won't use the phrase pause because that's a little bit uncomfortable for people these days. Uh, so after, uh, after the holiday, started the, started back on the program and just took my time with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I realized it was a 10 day program, but it changes and it varies for everyone. So whatever amount of time it took me and was doing quite well, I got to day 10 and I was down to three cigarettes a day 
and uh, got locked in at three a day, and those three were the hardest to get rid of. Yeah. So it was probably two or three weeks that I was stuck at three a day, and then the 28th of January uh, decided that I was going to quit on the 29th, uh, which was symbolic because it is one of my one of my granddaughter's birthdays. So that I was like, okay. That's a good day to quit. Wow. And you cut down so much from 20, 30 cigarettes a day down to three. Yeah. And you stayed there for three weeks. Yeah. It was uh, trying to get rid of those three was a challenge. It, yeah. It was probably the fact that it was the behavior or just my dependence, my psychological dependence on, okay, I, I just wasn't ready to say, okay, enough was enough. Let's stop this. Yeah. And um, it did happen, um, like I said, on the, the 29th of January last year. It was like, no, this is it. And still still struggled with those three that I wasn't having for a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but, <clears throat> yeah, I was able to get past it and realize that I was more psychological than physical at that point in time. Yeah. So what made you take the leap and smoke your last cigarette? Uh, I got tired of waking up coughing every morning and uh, all my typical morning would start off with going downstairs and we don't we didn't smoke in the house. So it was go downstairs, turn the coffee on, run outside. And being in Buffalo, New York, uh, this time of year is not the time that you want to be outside a whole lot. Uh, it's about, oh, it may hit 20 degrees Fahrenheit, mid 20s Fahrenheit oh. today. That'll be the high. Wow. Uh, nighttime lows are going down, you know, single digits. Um, so it can it can get chilly and you get a little bit of wind and snow and it's um, not it great. Just didn't make didn't make a lot of sense to be rushing you know getting jumping out of bed and rushing outside to do that. Yeah. So I think that was the big thing and it was like I I felt confident that I could do that. Yeah, yeah, and and you did it, and so it became really inconvenient to smoke and you started focusing a lot on that all the negative. Um, ways it affected your day-to-day -day life. Absolutely. There were too many times that uh, things would be going on. We'd be at one of the grandkids' birthday parties, and I'd walk out to have a cigarette and have to rush back because they were just getting ready to sing happy birthday. And it was like, this is this is a waste of my time and energy, and it's not where I want to be. Mm. Yes, yes. And you mentioned your wife is a smoker. So... How do you manage as a non-smoker? Because a lot of people worry when their spouse is a smoker, they worry, how can I how can I quit smoking? How can I do this? So why how did you do it? How did I do it? Well, my first thing was I didn't want to be the typical non-smoker and preaching at everybody and screaming and getting all upset uh, because that probably would have led me back to smoking. But uh, yeah, it was just accepting the fact that I was ready to to do this. Uh, she doesn't, you know, when she's ready, she will. And <clears throat> she is courteous enough. Um, she still smokes outside. Uh, if I want to go out and talk with her outside, that's fine. If I choose not to, I'm going to be a little bit more comfortable and warmer at least. Uh, <clears throat> and the, oh, I didn't know how I would react being in a car if she wanted to have a cigarette. And after spending time at the grandkids' house, she doesn't smoke around them. So all of a sudden, you know, after six hours or so, if we're over there, she's ready for one. And if it's her car, she, you know, she can light up. If it's my car, she can light up too. It doesn't make a difference anymore. So just accepting the fact that, yeah, there are other people in the world that are going to smoke. Uh, she's 
radius enough not to smoke complete, you know, right around me. And like I said, we hadn't we haven't smoked in the house in probably four years, mm. five years. So it's not like it's constantly around me. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. I think it's so important be, what you said that everyone is their own person with their own choices and everyone does what they want to do. So you can be a non-smoker around smokers. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's um, it was difficult at first trying to figure out how I was going to handle that. But there are so many people that I have spent time with and a lot of them are, you know, a lot of my friends are smokers and I'm not going to lose that friendship because they're going to, they're going to smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's humorous. Um, there are a number of couples that I know where one of, one of the spouses smoke and the other doesn't. Thank you for sharing that. And, um, Mike, I know in I know you were kind of uh, worried about how you can reward yourself as a non-smoker, and this is like so common. Most of us have used smoking to reward ourselves. So, how did you overcome this hurdle, and how do you reward yourself now? Uh, probably spending more time uh, on my artwork. I I took up painting when I decided to, when I retired about five years ago, and so now it's you know I've got that to fall back on. That is my that's the that's where I'm spending my time, and that in and of itself is rewarding. Yeah. So that is your replacement activity, basically. You replaced smoking with yeah. art. Wow. Yeah. So have you painted this lion that I see behind me? Uh, yeah, these are all things that I've done. I I also volunteer at the, the Buffalo Zoo as a docent, so uh, a lot of my inspiration. I've, I've been able to marry some of the uh, benefits of both. I enjoy the art and I enjoy the animals at the zoo, so it, a lot of my inspiration. It's amazing work. This is like professional. It looks so good. Uh, well, thank you. I appreciate it's, that. It's beautiful. Uh, is there is there somewhere we can see more of your work if I if I want to link somewhere for people to see more of what you're doing? Uh, well, the only place that I have, I don't have a website or anything. Uh, I do have them out on my Facebook page. OK, so and of course, I, I'm so easy to find with a name like Mike Miller. So. There's OK, I'll I link that because I'm sure people will love it. This is so good. So you replace smoking with art. Um, fantastic. And um, which which part of the program for you helped you the most? Uh, I think the the fact that it's um, cognitive behavioral theory based. I was a social worker uh, for the last ten years of my working career, and, and was familiar with CBT. So that. I could really relate to that and it made a lot of sense. So that I think was the part of the program is that it was a logical progression and step and understanding why it was that I was smoking and what was preventing me from quitting. Wow. So, uh, so you were a veteran, social worker and artist. You're doing everything. Uh, we we could throw in the 25 years of working in IT too. So <laughs> so so well rounded. So how do you manage stress now as a non-smoker? Um, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, it's, it there's nothing that I'm doing that uh, I'm cognitive of an effort that I'm making to handle stress. I think there's probably been less stress mm. from not smoking. Uh, yeah. And granted, you know, with everything that's going on in the world today, uh, yeah, there's plenty of opportunity for stress. And it may just be that I've just accepted what I, you know, what I've got control over and just focusing in on that. 
Yeah. So you say it was a challenging experience overall. And it is. I mean, quitting smoking is one of the most important achievements of anyone's life, I think. So how exactly did it challenge you and what did it teach you? Well, I think the challenge was <clears throat> coming to the realization that it was more psychological than physical. Uh, it was how I had conditioned myself. As you had mentioned earlier, it was a reward. You know, okay, let me, you know, I'm doing something. Uh, I've accomplished this much. Okay, you, you deserve a break here. Uh, I mean, even when I was working as a social worker, I was working at a hospital and we had to leave the hospital grounds in order to smoke. So I was like, okay, let me grab my coat, run out, run halfway across, you know, the parking lot out to the main street and have a quick cigarette and then run all the way back. And it was like, this is not making, doesn't make good sense. Uh, so understanding that it was more the psychological uh, and realizing that the physical portion of it was easier to conquer. It was still that nagging, well, gee, I really, I really just want one. And I think going through the program helped me to identify those, helped me to understand what was triggering it. A lot of it was, you know, it was a reward. It was to fill in a void when I was bored. Let me, you know, okay, I'm bored. Well, now I'm doing something. Well, nah, not really. Really, yeah. So I think that those were the challenge. The, the challenge was understanding why it was that I was smoking and how to address that, those issues as they arose. And the program actually did help me out with, you know, coming up with replacement activities uh, and altering my, my thought pattern. Uh, you know, what, why, why, why did I want this and how critical, you know, how much did I really want this one or was it just, was it just habit? And the vast majority of them were, well, yeah, I'm going to have a cigarette because this is what I do. Yeah, this is what I do at this point in time. I'm having a cup of coffee. Let me go have a cigarette. Uh, now I get up, I have my coffee and it's, you know, I don't even think about it. Mm. It's, you know, okay, I'm having a cup of coffee. I'm working on the computer. Uh, for those who are struggling with that first hour, I found watching watching your videos in the morning were the best thing in the world because it got me over, you know, that at least 20 minutes more often than not. Yeah. So doing that in the morning and then just taking my time and then really pushing, trying to push it out to, to hit that hour and then to see how far I could go. And what else helped you apart from watching the videos, which is a great advice? Uh, the... Uh, keeping track of, you know, the ledger, keeping track of the, you know, each cigarette that I smoked, it was a nuisance and it was, it would drive me insane while I was doing it, but it really deep down got me thinking about, okay, what were you doing just before this? What were you thinking? And how important was this cigarette? And all of a sudden it became less and less important. And it was easier to delay it. You know, it was like, okay, well, gee, you know, all, all of a sudden I was going two, three hours, four hours, and I wasn't really missing it. It was, you know, I'd have that momentary urge, and it was like, no, you don't really want that right now. And just kept delaying it and putting it off. And like I said, you know, when I got to the three, it was, you know, I'd have one sometime in the morning, one sometime in the afternoon, and one around seven in the evening. And it that that became a fixed pattern for me. And I think that's why it took me the three weeks to break that habit. 
Yeah, and um, I love how you explain how you went from just sort of following the urge that it's time to smoke to questioning this craving mind and questioning each cigarette. Do I really want this? Is it really offering me something? And to this this is exactly the the purpose of the smoking notebook it is driving many people insane this exercise but it is that's the purpose so to start questioning and uh, i love how you explained that well i learned from someone who was very familiar with it so you explained it very well and that's what made sense that's how it made sense to me well, thank you, thank you. Uh, and uh, I'm going to ask you one last question. What advice would you give to someone who's struggling to succeed? Uh, the biggest piece of advice that I could give to someone is make sure that you celebrate your successes. Mm -hmm. Every step along the way, you're getting closer and closer to your goal. The program is defined as a 10-day program, but it's not 10 days for everyone. It was over a, it was over a month for me, uh, three weeks where I struggled with the three and just kept, kept plodding along with it and then said, hey, you know what? I still got it down to three. Even if I got stuck here, that was better than where I was. And I celebrated each success along the way. So recognize what you've accomplished because that's going to that's going to motivate you to achieving that goal. And then it also helps you not to want to give up. And I think that's the big the big thing is that yeah, you're gonna hit bumps along the way. And so you take a moment, think about it, and then pick yourself up and keep moving forward. Love it. So strive for progress, not perfection, and celebrate your successes along the way, no matter how small, because they matter. Absolutely. So right. Mike, thank you so much for being here and for sharing your journey and your valuable advice. It was really, really great having you. And I know that everything you shared will help many others on their journey. So thank you. Well, I hope so. I, I appreciate all the help that I've received. Um, from yourself, from your staff, from the other people going through and they're sharing their success and their support. So I know that I know everyone can do this. It's just a matter of setting their mind to it and plugging along and not being not not becoming frustrated when everything doesn't happen immediately. It may take a little it, it's gonna take some work. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So if you're here watching this video, leave a comment below and let Mike and I know what you're taking away from his experience that can help you quit smoking and remain smoke free. We're looking forward to reading your comments and thank you all for being here. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Thank you, Nasia, and good luck, everyone.